Hey everyone, today we're going to discuss how the entity got each of the killers into the realm, and how it then convinced them to stay. Let's get into it. Cenobite's arrival into the realm is pretty funny. We actually see how he arrived in a cutscene. Basically, the Lament configuration appeared in the realm. Dwight found it, solved it, and summoned Pinhead. Then it seems he basically just stuck around. So blame Dwight if you hate facing Pinhead. The reason for Pinhead staying is as simple as him enjoying causing suffering, which he can do to his heart's content in the realm. So the entity just kind of got a freebie here. Executioner's is another fairly interesting one. His is the most formal, I would say. He basically gets an invitation to join the realm by the entity. He was about to go to sleep for a long time when the entity found him, requesting him to join the realm. Pyramid Head accepts the invitation and goes into the realm, seeing it as his new duty. Shape's arrival into the realm is quite unclear. We don't actually get a description of how it happens. However, based on the fact that he can break the rules of the trials with his tombstone add-ons, it's highly possible that he just forced his way into the realm. In a Benedict Baker quote that no longer is visible in game, but still visible on the wiki, we can read, he does not strike me as someone who even went unwillingly to this place. Is there more to this being than I can fathom. From this it seems he either just turned up, unannounced, or he was invited by the entity, like Pyramid Head, and simply came. I think most things for Myers don't have much reason, that's kind of his whole thing, he just kills, there's no motive behind it. Blight was probably the easiest addition to the realm, he was actively looking for the entity and the realm, due to some fascination and his need of a purpose. Eventually the entity just let him in essentially. Talbot's actually incredibly happy when he gets taken, with the law mentioning that he felt the sense of wonder he possessed as a child. Hag is one of few characters who actively called upon the entity. Her situation is different to Blight though. After she was captured by cannibals, with her remaining strength, Lisa scratched a symbol into the mud of Backwater Swamp. The entity answered her plea for help, in return, asking for blood. She then swears an oath to it, choosing vengeance. She kills her captors, and then enters the realm to serve the entity. Spirit also makes an oath. After she is cut up by her father and left to die, as a fog veils her eyes, the entity whispers to her, promising her blood and revenge. She agrees to join it, and enters the realm. Yeah, quite simple. She wanted vengeance, the entity provided that. Ghostface is taken without really any warning, but he doesn't seem to care. One moment he's in his room, staring at a wall of newspaper articles of his killings, ready to leave Roseville, and the next he's in the realm. He then smiles and gets on with it, like he literally doesn't seem to care. He's just actively pleased to be there. All the entity had to do was take him. Trickster has a near identical reaction to Ghostface. He's just finishing up his murder of the Mighty One board members, about to reach Yun Jin when a fog consumes him. He sees the realm, and he's just kind of like, yeah, okay. It literally even says Encore at the end of his lore. The entity just forcefully took him, and he was just okay with it. That's all the convincing he needed. Hillbilly didn't really require any manipulation or convincing from the entity, as Billy's parents basically did that for it. Unlike most other killers, there's nothing that directly says how Hillbilly got taken. No mention of the fog. It's possible that Billy doesn't even realize he has gotten taken by something, presuming the survivors are just trespassers onto his land. Or it's a ghostface situation, where he arrived in this new place and just kind of got on with it. Before the realm, he was just running around killing things, and that's all he really does in the realm too. Same goes for Huntress. We don't have the account of Fog consuming Huntress, or any kind of agreement between herself and the entity, so I think she was convinced in the same way as Billy. She'd be treated fairly and get to do whatever she wants. Both of them are motivated by protecting their land, and themselves, and in the realm, they can do those things freely. I think for these two, it's that simple. Nurse is taken after she murders everyone in Crota's Pren. As she is driven away in an ambulance, the ambulance crashes, and she is taken. Her years at Crota's Pren basically drove her insane, with some possible manipulation from the entity in that regard too. In the realm, the entity has altered her physically, but she appears to serve it out of a desire to purify people, and she believes she can only purify them through death. It's a pretty weak motive, but presumably this is what drives her to hunt the survivors down. The entity 
giving her the tools to do so. Nightmare also gets taken kind of without warning. Out of the more powerful characters, he seems almost fearful and definitely confused about what he experiences. His shift into the realm is quite strange. Freddy felt another presence with him, something old, powerful and dark. A miasma enveloped him, and the only sensation was a sound like wooden beams, flexing and creaking in the distance. The echoing groan of metal crushed against metal, something arcane and unknowable, halfway between language and pure terror. A moment of falling and spinning, and then Freddy was back in the school. This to me is really interesting, as it's almost like the entity is doing to Freddy what he does to his victims, almost mocking him in a sense, whilst taking him. As this description is very dreamlike, upon arrival to the realm, his powers are said to be tempered in some ways and focused in others, showing further that the entity definitely holds control over Freddy, changing his powers at will. Freddy then basically accepts his role as a killer in the realm, so I think the entity convinced Freddy by flexing its greater power, possibly the only thing that Freddy is actually scared of, something stronger or more evil than him. Legion's Frank gets taken by the fog after he and the other Legion members bury the Storkluck's body up Mount Ormond. After Frank disappears, Julie, Susie and Joey follow him into the fog. There isn't anything that touches on the agreement made or how the entity convinced them. For both Frank and Julie though, we can assume that the idea of them being able to become the Legion is all the convincing they needed. These two shared a passion for serial killers and kept scrapbooks on them. The whole Soldiers of Mayhem tome basically tells us that this is their dream. Super creepy, but that's how the entity got them to work with it. It gave them what they wanted. Susie and Joey are a bit of a different story. When they killed the clerk, they were very shocked and seemed greatly disturbed by it. We can assume therefore that these two were changed in some way by the entity, or maybe they were just so scared of it that they decided to serve it. I think that's the thing that makes the most sense. Onryo's entrance into the realm is very strange, but essentially the entity seems to kind of show her that it's got the same goals as her. It destroys a cabin built above the well she was in with a tidal wave and then pulls her out of the well. The fog then caresses the water's surface as she looks on. This seems almost like an agreement between them. Sadako gets her revenge, the entity gets her as a killer in the realm. Clown and Doctor seem to be convinced in similar ways, that being a promise to mess with or experiment on as many people as they wanted, without the consequence of the law or being caught. They were both killers prior to the realm, and so entered the realm happy to abide by the few rules that the entity had, in exchange for the freedom to do as they please. Both of them were being actively hunted in fact, before being taken. So yeah, these two weren't hard to get basically. How Pig was convinced by the entity is kind of interesting. She convinced herself almost, with the entity not really doing anything. She seems reluctant at first, but then yeah, she like convinces herself this is where she should be. Amanda was literally on the brink of death when she arrived in the realm, after being shot. So first off, she probably is up for staying because it means she isn't dead. Pretty big motivator there. <laughs> She goes through a few different possibilities for why she's in the realm. She thinks she's been cursed, or thinks maybe it's a test. The main reason she seems convinced to serve the entity though, is because she believes that it's all part of Jigsaw's plan, and she doesn't believe he would give up on her. So she essentially convinces herself of why she's in the realm, thinking this is what John wanted. Cannibal is basically scared into the entity's service. He gets taken right after the events of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Upon arrival into the realm, we get this section in his lore. It came from outside his vision, crawling over his skin with cold dread. He realized that no matter what outsiders could do to him, there was something worse something bigger that lived in the shadows. He was filled with a terror, unlike any he had ever felt before. But it was almost comforting, like the fear he'd felt with his family. The fear of disappointing them. Yup, that's it. The entity scares him, and Bubba is scared to disappoint it, so he serves it. Wraith and Artist were both manipulated by the entity, without even realizing, before entering the realm. Both of these characters are stalked throughout their lives by the entity, slowly getting whittled down through various traumas, until just before they are taken, when the entity hit them both with devastating events. Artis witnessed her crows kill her friends, and Wraith discovered he had crushed hundreds of people for Azarov. When they arrive to the realm, they are broken, and they appear to blame themselves for their actions. It seems 
this darkness then leads to anger, and knowing they can't escape the entity's grasp and darkness, they choose instead to serve it. Trapper seems to have also been stalked by the entity throughout his life, preyed on for his trauma surrounding the death of his mother, uncle, and also the cruelness of his father. Upon arriving to the realm though, unlike Wraith and Artist, Trapper isn't quite there yet, in terms of just giving in to the entity's darkness. He fought back an unknown amount of times, receiving the injuries we can now see on him for his defiance, until he eventually served the entity. Basically, he was forced into his role as a killer by the entity. Plague was also stalked by the entity. It whispered to her, and she was convinced that it was her god. After a plague hits Babylon, and Idiris is on the brink of death, she begs for the help of her gods. The entity answers, taking her into the realm. The agreement here is likely that Idiris believes her service to the entity killing the survivors, is going to save her people, this likely just being deception. In the realm, she serves the entity, as she believes she and her people have been saved. She's still devoted to it. Deathslinger is in a spot of desperation when he is taken. After he has dealt with Henry Bayshore and the Prison Warden, two people who used him, he goes to his old cell in Hellshire Penitentiary. Fogg then enters the cell, and a dusty path appears. At the end of the path, he sees the silhouettes of all who have done him wrong, and the meat hooks of the realm, ready to be used. He then walks down the path, entering the realm. So he kind of seems unaware of what the realm is, being manipulated by the entity, who makes the survivors appear to be the people Caleb hates. It's almost a mirage moment. We can therefore assume that Caleb's willingness to participate in the trials is down to him believing and seeing the survivors as the people who wronged him, the entity tricking his vision essentially. Oni appears to be convinced not by the entity, but just because he's really angry that he caused the downfall of his family and their legacy. After he begins to die in the stone mill and is taken by the entity, he is transformed into the Oni in the realm. He's forced to wear an Oni mask and embrace the name he hated, Oni Yamaoka. So I think that basically he's just very angry, and this anger blinds him, and he takes part in the trials without much convincing. It's possible that a bit like Deathslinger, Oni also sees the survivors as people like the Lord who called him Oni Yamaoka, or people he hated essentially. Or it really is just pure anger that makes him stay. Twins, or Charlotte really, because Victor's dead when she is taken, is convinced by the entity simply by it offering somewhere where she won't be hunted, and Victor is alive. Prior to the arrival of the fog, Charlotte sits by a campfire and is freezing. She accepts death. Before hearing Victor's shriek, Victor then appears in her chest, jumping from it, and running away. She follows him into the fog, and it says she prepared to eviscerate any who set foot near her brother. Basically, she got Victor back, and so she serves the entity so they can stay together. It's possible too that she may have a similar distortion happening seeing the survivors as members of the Black Veil, the cult responsible for experimenting on the twins, and killing Victor. It's unclear though, although it is hinted at. Finally, we have Demogorgon and Nemesis. Demogorgon has no indication on the logistics behind its agreement with the Entity. My two little theories though, are that either the Entity contacted the Mind Flayer, creating a connection between its own realm and the Upside Down, a bit like Eleven did in the show, and as a result, the Demogorgon crawled through a connecting portal into the realm. Or alternately, the entity and the Mind Flayer made an agreement, as mutual entities, for Demo to just join the realm. For Nemesis, we also have very little to go on. It does basically spell it out at the end of his lore though, after being taken into the realm. All that mattered was soldiering on into the fog, continuing the mission, find stars, and kill anyone who gets in the way. Basically, he's just continuing his mission. He isn't convinced, really, it seems. The setting of his chase is just changed. It's possible, though, that in some way the entity has reprogrammed him, making his new goal to hunt survivors and place them onto hooks. Because if he just wanted stars, then he would do more regular kills instead of hooks. So there has to be some manipulation from the entity there, even if it doesn't say there is. Alright, well, that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed, and be sure to drop your own thoughts on this down below. Thanks, and goodbye.